This is part one of chapter one of the companion video for the book Mastering EKG Rhythm Interpretation. This is the human heart. So before we get into the actual different types of EKG dysrhythmias, we're going to have to talk about the cardiac anatomy. There really isn't a structure in the human body that's more fascinating than the human heart. It beats about 70 to 80 times a minute on average, which is about 100,000 times per day. Over 35 million beats in a year, pumping about 2,000 gallons of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels every single day. If you were to turn your faucet, like your water faucet on your sink, on a full blast, it would take over 45 years to equal the amount of blood pumped on an, in an average lifetime. It's not greedy either. The heart only takes about 5% of the blood for itself. The brain, on the other hand, takes about 15 to 20%, right? It's located, the heart that is, in the center of the thorax, behind the sternum. Behind the heart are the vertebrae. The heart is slightly tilted to the left, placing the apex in the left thorax. The majority of the mass of the heart is located in the left chest area. To the left and the right of the heart are the lungs, and the left lung contains a concave groove that allows the lateral wall of the heart to sit there, and that's called the cardiac notch, right about there. Whenever you're discussing the heart, it's important to also mention the great vessels. So the ones we're going to talk about are the superior and inferior vena cava. So the superior vena cava is on top of the heart. That's where the word superior comes from, and the inferior coming from below the heart. The vena cava dump into the right atrium. So the vena cava are the large veins return blood towards the heart. And those veins dump blood right into the right atrium. So the right atrium receives unoxygenated blood. And it sends that unoxygenated blood down through that valve right there. Okay. That's called the tricuspid valve because it has three cusps. And it's on the right side of the heart. So blood will eject from the right atrium and go into the right ventricle. You have four chambers, now that we've mentioned two of them, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. So we've taken blood from the vena cava into the right atrium. That unoxygenated out -oxygenated blood goes from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. After it's in the right ventricle, it is then pumped again into the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries are the only arteries that do not have oxygen because they are taking blood from the right side of the heart and going to the lungs. That's where it gets the word pulmonary from. So there's a valve also on the pulmonary trunk right about here. Let me use a different color right there. That's called the pulmonic valve. Sometimes it's called the semi-lunar pul pulmonic valve, and that closes shut after blood is ejected into the pulmonary trunk on its way to the lungs. Let's clear all this out of the way. After blood goes to the lungs, it receives oxygen, offloads CO2, and returns to the heart through the pulmonary veins, the only oxygenated veins in the body. The pulmonary veins bring blood to the left atrium. From the left atrium, it's pumped down into the left ventricle. It has to go through another AV valve. On the left, we call this the mitral valve. Sometimes it's referred to as the bicuspid valve because it has two cusps. The left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta through the aortic valve. And you've guessed it, it's also called the aortic semilunar valve. That valve, when closed shut, after being blood is being pumped into it, will not allow blood back into the left ventricle. This is when the coronary arteries actually receive blood flow. That's after systole, during diastole. We should all also mention the different layers of the heart. The innermost layer, which inside all of these chambers, is called the endocardium, endo or inside. What you see here, the middle layer, this thick, very thick layer, the main mass of the heart really, is called the myocardium, myo for muscle. And then the outside of the heart is surrounded by the epicardium. Around that, you'll have a pericardial sac. And that's 
filled with a little bit of fluid that allows for the heart to move without too much friction. And that is pretty much the basic anatomy of the heart. Of course, there are some more complex things that, to understand. For instance, the AV valves are attached by these things called chordae tendon, which attach to papillary muscles. And the tricuspid valve has the three chordae tendinae, and the bicuspid has the two. And of course, there's a complex conduction system that we're going to talk about here shortly. And that concludes part one of chapter one, discussing the human heart. Please continue on to part two.